This is One on One. We are pleased to welcome first Barry Ostrowski, President and CEO, RWJ Barnabas Health, and Dr. Stephen Labuti, Senior Vice President, Oncology Services, RWJ Barnabas Health, and Director, the Rutgers Cancer Institute of New Jersey. Thank you, gentlemen, for joining us. Thanks, Thanks. for having us, Steve. Uh, Barry, put this in context. Um, why is this initiative, why is this relationship so important when it comes to cancer care? Well, our relationship with Rutgers University and the medical schools are critical, we think, for the health of the communities we serve in the state of New Jersey. As to cancer, the Cancer Institute, the Rutgers Cancer Institute of New Jersey, is among only 50 in the United States with the national designation, does incredible research, offers incredible clinical uh, uh, possibilities to the people who live in New Jersey. It's our job as RWJ Barnabas Health to support those initiatives for the betterment of our communities. We couldn't be happier. And of course, Steve is a fabulous leader and a great clinician, and we're doing academics and research and clinical care. This is why we're in business. Let me do this uh, before you jump back in. Doctor, to make it clear, those of you who watch us, you know that RWJ Barnabas Health is not just a major funder of public broadcasting in our production as well, but Barry serves on the board of NJ TV. Let me ask you, Doctor, I just asked you before we got in the air, cancer care, last five years, biggest changes are? Technology. So uh, we understand that cancer is uh, often a disease of genes and our ability to uh, look and sequence uh, genes in individual cancers, uh, so-called precision medicine, has really allowed us to make tremendous advances. And immunotherapy, harnessing the body's own immune system. Break that down. Immunotherapy in layperson's language is? So immunotherapy essentially is stimulating your body's own immune system to fight against cancer. And it's been around for a while, but over the last five to ten years has really begin to make, begun to make tremendous progress on our ability to apply it to patients for successful treatments for cancer. And so it's essentially your own body's immune cells become mm. the warriors against your tumor. You know, it's interesting, Barry. You and I talk about leadership a lot, right? Um, and I've done some leadership coaching at your place as well. But technology, it's interesting, the connection between innovation or technology, then innovation, and it's tied to leadership in this field. Am I making too much of that? Not at all. I mean, you are an expert on leadership, Steve. And so here what you have is the need for leadership that's able to meld technology and innovation with delivery. Uh, we have great leaders that, frankly, don't know enough about technology, that don't understand enough about innovation. So the new leadership in all industries, but particularly in healthcare and certainly in cancer care. Excuse me, why particularly in healthcare? Well, because healthcare has multiple fronts of innovation. We have technology in terms of medical equipment. We have new frontiers in terms of treatment. We are training physicians and other licensees differently. All this is new, and to simply continue to do it the old way is not sufficient. Also, we have a highly educated community of patients who expect the latest technology and the latest techniques. So when you're leading of many professionals, you have to ensure that they are up to date on this. The one thing that I think is very important you and I talk about, technology and innovation will not substitute for cognitive skill. What do you mean cognitive you have, skill? People have to think. <clears throat> you know, artificial intelligence can't right. tell you why, right? <laughs> so, so you need right. to develop this cognitive uh, skill that professionals have to think through things. In thinking about things, artificial intelligence and technology can help you, but you still have to have judgment skills. So now a leader is faced with developing judgment skills and new technology and innovation. It's not easy. Doctor, let me flip this around based on what Barry said. Teaching people who are scientists, researchers, really smart people, let's just say scored a lot higher than some of us, mm -hmm. me included, on standardized tests in math and science. That being said, teaching them to be the innovative leaders they need to be, going the other way based on what Barry said, you say? So I think uh, to be successful uh, in academics for a lot of them, especially going through research and, and in a healthcare profession, required them uh, to be successful in a competitive way. And uh, the leadership that's necessary to be innovative, uh, you need to have that competitive drive. You need to not be satisfied with the present. You need to be striving to do better in the future. And we try to create an environment uh, at Rutgers and at the Cancer Institute, and certainly through our partnership with RWJ Barnabas, uh, to empower our leaders. What does that mean? Break that down, because that's a great phrase, 
but in reality, operationalize it. Uh, operationalizing, empowering our leaders. Yeah, what does so that mean? What it means is you give them an environment where their ideas are valued, where they're not put into a, a box or a silo, but they're allowed to think out of that box and be creative. Uh, you know, for example, uh, we have a major initiative in studying cancer metabolism. Metabolism is how do cancer cells use the energy that uh, we consume uh, to divide, spread, you know, essentially uh, grow. Um, how can we take an understanding of cancer metabolism and marry it to a better understanding, as I was speaking earlier, about the immune system, the cancer's immune system, to make progress. And we have investigators at the Cancer Institute that are- When you say investigators, people think federal government, FBI. Yeah. You don't mean by that. You mean principal Scientific investigators- researchers. Who, who go, hey, yes. By the way, that means people scientists. go after grants from the government <laughs> and other places, but, but go ahead. So we have scientists at the Cancer Institute uh, that are asking the question, can we learn more about the body's immune system and right. how it can effectively treat cancer by applying studies of cancer metabolism to that. So that's out of the box thinking. You know, as, as we're listening to this, and by the way, if you're listening on the audio side, we have several radio uh, partners, Barry Ostrowski, President and CEO, RWJ Barnabas Health, Dr. Stephen Labuti, um, who is actually the director of the Rutgers Cancer Institute in New Jersey. What's fascinating to me is there's no disrespect, there's some jargon there. Okay, some scientific terms. So as cancer treatment becomes more advanced, more innovative, more technology driven, Barry, how much pressure is there to be able to communicate and explain this to folks who do not have the background that Dr. Labuti and his investigators have? Go ahead. Exactly. So you have to have, you have many constituencies with whom you have to communicate. You have these great researchers that are inventing ways to better treat cancer. They have to speak to their colleagues who are out there treating patients every day. And then you have the constituency of patients and their families who don't, can't get lost in the jargon, only know they have this terrible diagnosis, who's going to help me and how's it going to work. We in healthcare, frankly, have not done a particularly good job in communicating scientific and other pieces of information to our patients and their families. So you can, in fact, have great science with terrific discovery, but if it's not communicated to those who are treating the patient mm -hmm. and the patients themselves don't understand it, it is a drag on what we're trying to, in fact, accomplish. Final question, what do you think most people dealing with cancer and their families are looking for? They're looking for compassion and they're looking for knowledge. They're looking for experts that understand their disease but also understand them as a person and a patient. And that's, I think, something that's critically important to us is that we don't forget mm -hmm. as we get excited and make progress on the science side that we're doing science in support of and uh, to the, for the betterment of our patients suffering with this disease. Finally, there's a, is it a pavilion? Is it a center? There's a Kent Center opening up in a year or so? Right. No, it'll be more than a year, but we've announced the construction of a new Cancer Institute pavilion in New Brunswick. How will it be different than what we have right well, now? Well, for one, it's going to be an all-inclusive pavilion. We're going to have inpatient beds and laboratories. Uh, it's going to be for research, academics, and delivery. It'll be a state-of-the-art cancer hospital in New Jersey, the first of its kind. So we're very excited about it. Steve, of course, is leading it, uh, and we look forward to its opening a few years out. Barry, Dr. Labuti, thank you very much. Uh, an you, important Steve. subject that impacts virtually all of us out there right now.